Hi, this is John Reed. I hope you can see me okay. I'm literally surrounded by lamps. Uh, it's the 4th of July weekend, and I'm getting ready for a barbecue tomorrow, but it has some evening time. And it's been a long time since I've been able to shoot a couple of my more uh, solution-oriented videos uh, for SAP uh, solutions firms. And I have an ongoing series, and unfortunately I kind of dropped the ball on it because I got so involved in other projects. Uh, of course, Sapphire, ASUG in Orlando, and then uh, Dennis Hallett and I launched a video site, jd-od.com. You might want to check out with a bunch of video commentary coverage of the on-demand world. Um, but anyway, as a result of that, I've been a little bit interrupted in my shoots. Now, if you've watched a lot of my videos where I've done these kinds of shoots, <clears throat> you might be noticing a little bit of a difference. There's a couple of things. First of all, I'm shooting this uh, shoot in the evening, uh, and I'm actually in the home office for once. Usually I shoot these in my office. I'm surrounded by lamps that you can't see. Uh, but anyway, I want to get down to business here and talk with you about destination websites. Now, the issue that's come up is that with the explosion of social networking and everyone feeling like they really have to get hip to social networking and be have a business presence on Facebook and LinkedIn, maybe Twitter, um, starting to think, well, you know, I don't really need a destination website, I don't, or I, or I, I don't really need to do much with my website. And in fact, nothing is really further from the truth. And something I think I have mentioned in this video series before when I talked about content marketing is that until you have meaningful content and thought leadership in a particular area of SAP, you can really forget about making any kind of contribution to these social networks that means anything. So the website in the modern era is different. And the reason is that it is true that people are visiting websites less frequently. I don't have the stats right in front of me now, but uh, the stats and studies that have been done are showing that it's a lot harder to gain momentum building your own site. And, you know, you can certainly see that in the SAP space where, in addition to the usual social suspects like the Facebooks and the LinkedIn's of the world, you have the community network and all kinds of other sites that are very well established. So, what do you do? Does that mean you kind of bluff your own site and kind of stick with these other social sites? Well, not really. Uh, basically, the reason you want to continue to take your site seriously is that there's still quite a bit of tire kicking that goes on based on search. And search is still dominated by Google with a little more from Bing, but basically folks are searching on keywords that are pertaining to things they want to either buy or evaluate. And yes, some of the search results are now being influenced by uh, recommendations from friends and what have you. But the fact remains is that search is still a very common practice for the busy decision maker who's looking to try to find out a bit more about a specific area with an SAP. So they're going to do a search and they're going to find your website. Well, l l let's hope that they find your website, right? That's sort of the issue. So search is still relevant, and because of that, you still want to have a website, and you still want people to be finding you based on the kinds of content I've talked about producing in some of the previous videos we've had. So that doesn't really change. Now, you definitely want to uh, equip your website with the kinds of tools to make it really easy for uh, those that site to get updated quickly and efficiently, and that would be a modern content management system platform like a WordPress or a Joomla or what have you. Um, so you really do want to have a content management system, but you'd be amazed. There's really very few standout websites in the SAP space. And I have a lot of personal experience with this because uh, I evaluate a lot of these websites because I do product reviews on third-party solutions for ERP executive. And so I'm often looking at these sites and there's, there's still a lot of open territory here uh, to exercise a bit of thought leadership, perhaps start a blog or what have you. I've gotten into those topics a little bit before. But the point is, there's still value there and there's still a way to start developing 
whether it's active leads or even more passive leads in the form of newsletter subscriptions or what have you, webinar registrations, a lot of value in investing in, in your own website. Um, having said that, uh, there is also a place for uh, having an effective social networking strategy as well. Um, so the two actually go hand in hand in many ways. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you do want to put a human face on your website, and ideally, uh, your executives and your subject matter experts are posting content, perhaps to a blog, uh, perhaps to a section of the site that contains how-to tutorials. There seems to be a misconception sometimes that all the content has to be completely vendor-free and not about your product at all. And that's actually not true. Um, you know, for example, you could have a blog, and, and yeah, I think it's good if, if a lot of the blog entries are not about uh, your firm. Maybe they're about various topics, uh, best SAP upgrade tactics, or whatever it might be that you're trying to focus on. But you could also have a bunch of informative videos um, on how to use your product. There's a lot of content that we could think of as pre-sales content. And pre-sales content is equally valid in many ways. Now, uh, of course, you have to be a little careful about tweeting that kind of content. No one wants to, you know, see a tweet or a Facebook post link uh, to pre-sales stuff. So you have to understand that that's not an entry point for sharing content socially. But still, you can create a lot of very meaningful content that helps folks make better sense of your product, keeping in mind, of course, that if you shoot some great how-to videos, you also want to get that text transcribed so that you can feature it and it will come up in search as well. But, uh, you know, you look at a, a company like uh, Bluefin Solutions. I have some friends who work there. did a little bit of work with them, but not currently a client at the moment. But uh, this is a site that I would definitely recommend as far as they have succeeded in a really active blog and that brings a lot of attention and eyeballs into what they're doing and really helps to position themselves as leaders in their market um, and you know websites have a phenomenon where as you share content you build trust and as you build trust uh, you generate a certain authentic type of relationship where people are just more willing to initiate contact with you. I've seen this again and again with clients. So the destination website is still something to shoot for, but you understand that the idea of building, for example, a pure e-commerce site where you're generating all your revenue simply from what people do on your website, that's not going to be very realistic to do anymore. It's very difficult, but that's not what you're going for. You're just viewing it as yet another marketing channel. And yeah, um, in some cases, you can even pay for some of that content. And I continue to tell my clients that you don't need to spend nearly the kind of money you might once have thought you did on search engine optimization and things like that. There's a little bit of basic understandings in that area you'll need. Uh, I think I've covered a bit of that in a video, um, and I have an article on my site about it as well. You need a little bit of SEO maybe, but you're almost better off paying for uh, content if it comes to that. I prefer to see folks generating their own content internally, but it doesn't hurt to invest in editorial resources as well. Um, whether it's a aspiring journalist that <laughs> just got laid off from a newspaper and you, you think you might be able to groom them a little bit, uh, it's really fun to groom young writing talent. And, um, you know, as you're creating these uh, content pieces, you can really look at it from a variety of different angles. Some of it you might give away for free as uh, how-to type content. Some of it you might uh, actually turn into white papers or a series of articles and actually ask for registration information. Remember to keep it short and sweet, uh, but maybe you capture job title, email, phone number, uh, and generate potential leads that way. Uh, or, you know, you might, you might pay someone to develop customer case studies, which is a whole different topic. Um, so... Uh, I'll talk about customer case studies in a related video, uh, but those are some of the reasons why I definitely would urge you not to dismiss the value of your own website just because people are 
piling on to each other to get a Facebook page set up. So this is John Reed of johnerp.com, and I'm glad to be back on the video trail.